Welcome to this Getting Started with SharePoint Framework video series. This is tutorial two. Connect your client side web part to SharePoint, aka Hello World part two. And this is the September 2018 edition. So we keep on evolving these uh, materials and these trainings as we move along and introduce new versions of SharePoint Framework for you to take advantage. Now, this one uh, is dependent on the steps and actions and the solution which are created in the tutorial one. So if you haven't done that, please go through first the tutorial one, and then after that, come back on the tutorial two. Now, if you continue this directly after the tutorial one, uh, you actually still have the command let uh, running or the, the command trump uh, running. If you don't have that, or if you have, have been having a break between, uh, please go to the hello world web part a solution folder and then do a call serve uh, before you actually continue as a tutorial uh, to, to modify the existing code, which we created in the tutorial one. Now, in our case, uh, we can, for example, uh, well, de depending on where you end up in the tutorial one, you might have the web part visible in the workbench or might not. So it slightly depends. It doesn't really matter. We're going to see the changes as we move along within the, uh, within the steps in this tutorial. Now, let's actually move into the code of the Hello World web part. And for, for the first thing, what we want to do is open up the web part uh, code. And in here, we actually want to access the context of the page and we want to get the web part, web title of the page or the, the title of the site, so to say, site or web or whatever you want to call that. But it is the root side of the, well, the site which is hosting the web part. So we're going to access this by using this dot context, page context, and then web to title. And that's going to render uh, the title of the web where, where this web part is calling the currently being uh, rendered. What's important to notice here is that if you do uh, this dot context, you can actually see quite a lot of different settings and quite a lot of different access points and, and methods and classes available for you. Uh, you can have the page context and that is then providing access, for example, to the site and user and list and list item if you are in a list item level. So there's quite a lot of information available for you in the web part directly to get advantage. So you don't always have to go and call a REST API or external API to get access on the information. Now we change the setting, uh, save the, the changes. And if we go back on the page uh, in the local workbench, we can actually see this new text available, which is saying loading from local workbench. If you go to the SharePoint online workbench, and let's actually make sure that our web part is visible. So where is our hello world? There it is. We can, and let's actually refresh the page. We can actually see that it's loading from the group and grouping the title of the site uh, from where we are from a context perspective. And from a context perspective, Right now we are in this site. So sppmp.sharepoint.com slash site slash group and the title of that site equals uh, group because that's what we actually render inside of the web part code. And obviously if you go to a sub site or you might have sub sites in a site collection, you can always go underscore layout and 15 and workbench like mentioned in the, uh, in the first tutorial to get access on the context uh, in the context of the SharePoint online to the workbench and online workbench. So you're able to then access the information which is in the SharePoint. Good. So uh, let's actually start modifying our code slightly. Now we tested that everything is working properly and we can see that the title uh, of the site is being rendered differently dependent or are we in SharePoint online or are we in the, in the local workbench. So what we want to do is actually get a list of lists available within the site. And there's one thing, one additional thing what we're going to do here is that because in the local workbench, uh, this is running in local host. So you're not in the context of SharePoint. There is no SharePoint list data. So we're going to create a mock uh, store um, and we're going to then mock the list data. So we're able to see the rendering of a web part, even though we're running the web part in a local workbench. So let's actually make these steps uh, happen. So first of all, let's go to our source code. Let's add a few more instances, uh, sorry, interfaces into our code, which we're going to then use within the code, uh, which is retrieving the information 
around a SharePoint list. So this is a, a array of lists and there is the actual list interface where we are interested on a title value. Now, the next thing what we want to do is that we want to create mock HTTP client. And what that, that's going to be is that our it's going to provide our mocked data. So the data which we can use when we are actually accessing the uh, or rendering the web part in the local workbench. So let's see what we're doing here. So first of all, we are in importing that ISP list from the Hello World web part. So we created this one in the same folder. So the path is being dot slash hello world web part. And that has now the ISP list because we added that ISP list interface directly there. The second thing what we're doing is that we are creating an array of lists and we are then uh, setting the title to be mock list, mock list 2, mock list 3 and ID being 1, 2, 3. And we're returning that one from the mock HTTP client uh, object. So there's a method which is then providing access to the set of lists uh, from this object. Well, it's pretty obvious that we're going to use this one, uh, this code inside of the web part. So let's flip back on the web part and we want to import that code piece. So mock HTTP client from the mock HTTP client. So that is again the file right next to this file in the folder structure. Now we want to import that and then we want to get uh, the method inside of our web part which is around getting access on that list data uh, from the mock HTTP provider or mock HTTP client. Now, now the next thing is that this is for the local workbench and the next uh, scenario what we want to tackle is to get access on the SharePoint list. So whenever we're running in the context of SharePoint online. So let's actually add a import for SP HTTP client. And that is a nice component encapsulating all of the, the cookie and HTTP header settings, which are needed when you're hitting SharePoint REST APIs. So that uh, you can easily just concentrate on getting the relevant information or relevant code piece for hitting, in this case, for example, the underscore lab API, web and lists API. And we're providing the filter equals uh, hidden equals false. So we're getting only those lists from the uh, site where the, the widths are not hidden. So it's just normal lists which are visible. So the really the key point here to notice is that we're using the SPHTTP client which is then hiding whatever uh, all of the additional things which we need to, need to do when we're hitting the, the uh, SharePoint API. So all of the cookie and access points and access tokens and headers and all of that, you don't need to worry about it because you get access on the SPHTTP client from the context and that is then running to get operation against that list and voila, you have the information available. And that is providing a list uh, as well, like to get mock list data. Good. Now, the, the next thing what we want to do is do some styling uh, for our web part. So we want to make sure that when we're rendering the web part content, uh, it is actually getting styled properly in our in our output of rendering. Now, in the style file, and this is the uh, SCSS file, uh, we can see that every single style definition what we have here is encapsulated inside of the hello world uh, element. And this is really to isolate this web part uh, styles and these web part styles from another web part style so they don't actually overlap. So if you have a multiple different web parts, you, you definitely want to make sure that the, the root element in this file is unique so that those styles are only applied to that particular web part. In this case, we're going to actually add a few additional entries inside of that element. So we're going to have a styling for list and styling for list item. And this is mainly for when we're outputting the list of uh, lists uh, in the web part, we get them nicely visible in the UI. So let's actually save changes over there as well. Now, um, scroll, uh, Looking down on the tutorial, the next thing what we're going to do, so now we have styling and then we have two ways of getting the data. The one which we should hit when we're in SharePoint Online and the one which we should use when we are in the context of the uh, local workbench. And this means that there's two things, uh, additional things what we want to do. So first of all, 
we need to have an environment information available. And this is really conveniently available for the base classes as well, or the base components or infrastructure, which is available for you. So it can easily check what is the environment where I'm being executed from a web part perspective. The second thing about what we want to add here in the web part code is the actual rendering of the list data. So render list, and that's actually going to list render the list of list in the ULLI uh, using ULLI elements. Good. So now, uh, so now we have styling. We have get list data uh, for online, get list data for on prem. The, the rendering of a list uh, uh, works in a way that we get a, a query. I use the DOM element query selector to a div named SP list container. So we need to actually make sure that that kind of an element exists in our HTML structure. Now, first of all, uh, we definitely want to make sure uh, that we load the list of lists dependent on the environment where we are. So let's add that one code here. So we're adding this rendered list async method where we check if the environment type equals local. And that means that we're running in a local workbench or if the environment type equals SharePoint or a classic SharePoint. Now, key, key point here to realize is that the modern web parts, client side web parts, do work actually on a classic SharePoint as well. So if you have a classic publishing side or a classic in, classic theme sites, you can actually use the the, the client side web parts as well. Um, and then uh, this is basically the classic experience that is then the SharePoint or the modern experience. Now, what else do we need to do? Well, we need to make sure that this logic uh, is included when we're rendering the web part. So let's actually go back on the render method. And in the render method, let's do a few modifications. So first of all, we needed to add an HTML entry with an SP list container. So this is the one where we're actually pinpointing, we're using the code. Uh, if I go slightly up here, uh, we can see that the code was accessing SP list container and that HTML structure is getting added on the inner HTML of that div. So we need to have that one element inside of the render method. And then we need to make sure that our render list async method is getting called properly. So let's add that, that one there as well and save the changes and we should be pretty much good to go. So now let's actually move back on the browser and let's go to the local workbench. We can actually see that this has been refreshed automatically. We can absolutely do a refresh here as well. We can see that it's it's loading from a local workbench and we're getting mock list data, mock list data two, mock list data three, as expected. Now in SharePoint Online, the workbench does not reflect the changes automatically, uh, so we need to explicitly click refresh. But now we are still loading the files from a local host automatically, so we actually render the list of lists uh, dynamically based on that REST, REST API, giving us all of the lists within this site collection or within this site, which uh, are not actually hidden. So we can actually see the list of lists available and the message loading from group because we used reference on the contextual web title in the code. Now, quite simple story, quite simple uh, functionality from a code perspective, but really the, the power here is, uh, and the key points to notice, is getting the and uh, hitting the REST API sync SharePoint is super simple. Uh, it's just a matter of knowing the APIs and then uh, formatting the API queries properly and then matter of outputting that information properly. And we also use the mock HTTP client so we can actually render and see the output of rendering also in a local workbench if we want. Now, do you want to use mock data and mock data sources? That's obviously debatable. It is a good practice because then you're able to see how the rendering works in the local workbench before you even render stuff in a SharePoint Online. But again, it comes down on your coding conventions. Do you want to do this kind of a model in, uh, in your uh, deployment? But that's all we're going to do within this tutorial. So let's move into the next tutorial where we then actually start using this web part in the context of SharePoint as, a, we, as we get it deployed to the SharePoint sites and start using that from a, a 
first locally and then eventually we package the code and get it deployed using a CDN.